So as our next step, we can go back to the SAP BTP Business Application Studio and our dev space which we created in the last class. I opened the dev space now and you can see this is how our initial experience for the development studio look like. And here first thing you need to do is open the projects folder because all the project which we will create should be created in the projects directory. So click on open folder and you see here it opens the project structure. Just choose projects and click OK. Yeah. So it is opening the projects directory now. You can see it has opened. So we are now in the projects directory. So let's click on start an app from the template. So we want to create now a new project from template. So we are creating our first MDK application. And now here we will choose MDK project, mobile development kit project, let you build, deploy and manage cross-platform metadata application. So these applications will run on Android, iOS with native experience and the same application also works with the web development environment. So we have different different variety of types, but we'll go with MDK. Click next. And now here it asks for the Cloud Foundry login. So this is a step where most people typically go wrong. They will end up just choosing the default endpoint and they will continue and it will not work so for example if i now try to type my credentials you will see the login will work but you will have a problem at later point of time so don't do this mistake always go to your btp account first and check what is the correct endpoint of your btp account so go to the overview and here you see this is the correct api endpoint now if you notice this is basically an extended BTP account with a dash 001. Yes, so this is what you must have to be careful of while logging in in the BAS for BTP account. You need to change this endpoint here. So you see the, the default one which was there already was just US 10. So we put the correct one and let me log in now. And I log in. So you can see I've logged in and now it has picked up the correct organization and we will choose the dev space as our default space for uh, deploying this application, this MDK application. Click on apply and let's provide the detail, the basic detail of our first MDK app. So I will be choosing the template as the base application because this is a good start. We are starting it for the first time. I would like to start with the base application. In the coming episodes, I will show you creating more complex applications as well. So that's our base application. And we will call Anubhav first MDK app as a name. OK. And then we can just keep the MDK client version 6.0 and later. That's good. The, the target folder where the app will be stored is projects directory, which is also good for the business application studio. And we click on next. Now comes is a very important step, the data source where we want to connect. So as I already mentioned that we would like to connect our application to the default ESPM data source. So we choose here the standard type and we will just choose our application ID. So this is the ID of the application which we created in the last episode as a as a native mobile mdk app in the uh, in the mobile service cockpit you can see the application id common about trainings i would like to connect my application to this application so that is what we will choose and then the destination which we had created <coughs> is also visible uh, will be visible here called anubo mdk dest so this is very important now remember one thing our web application will also use exact same destination. So when we created the destination in the BTP sub account, that has to match with this name Anubhav, Anubhav MDK Dest, you see. It's exact match. It should exactly match, guys. Otherwise, our web application will not work. Okay. So in the service path, we'll leave it empty and we want to enable the offline feature. So what is an offline feature? So our mobile phone, if our mobile phone not have any network connectivity, 
still our application will work it will be able to read write data to the offline store and when the when we go online the data will automatically sync with the online store so that it will take care so that is why we are choosing enable offline feature also for our mobile application this is only applicable for mobile phone app apps not for the the desktop web application so click on next now we will choose the data collection so from the o data service we will be choosing here the collection of uh, data what data we wanted to show to the user so that is what we will be choosing so i will choose entity sets as customer product sales order header and items so these are the four entity sets of my data source which i would like to see the data for and i click on finish <clears throat> and now the application is generating so as a typical process of business application studio the app will automatically generate the basic skeleton of the application gets created and this application will have the connectivity to our sap o data service and the the business application studio will restart with the application in context open on the left side so let's try to understand the different components and the part of this application the first and the foremost important file is application.app file this is the launcher file of our application okay so you can right click and open this file with the text editor or application editor or page map editor there are three types of editors which are provided so if you open it with the text editor you will know what code is written inside so from here you can see it is basically calling an event on launch and it's calling an action so the entire application has major components as pages which are nothing but the screens the ui the rules <clears throat> which contains the handler of actions in case a specific event occurs the actions which are nothing but your processing logic when user click the button or login button log out button or you know any kind of actions in future there are some pre-built actions as well and then we have extensions and fragments for additional extension of our app apart from that we have static resources like images and translation files and also the service connectivity with the service data xml so and all the web application related resources are part of the web folder yes so these are the main folders of the application this is the folder structure of the application so let me explain each and every important part which is important for us when it comes to the application so i will go back and we will understand the <coughs> the application structure so the first and foremost file as i showed you first is application.f file what it does what is the purpose of this file so this is the file main configuration for our app from within bess so within the business application studio it's a main configuration file for our application so here we define the starting events and pages which will be booted at the start of the application also we can set different stages of the app session life cycle push notification and more so if you go back to the text editor of the code you will see that on will update on launch main page so from here we are telling what is my starting page of the application so in future if you want to change the starting page the default page you can do that for example you want to integrate your custom login page you can do that <clears throat> so this is the first setting important setting what you can find from here the application starts to the main page so what is main page file so let's talk about main page 
this is like the actual starting page x screen for your application so this is the first page of our mdk app <coughs> yes for this we will use the this is the basically launching page of our application for application functionality so the actual application functionality It starts from this page and SAP provide a graphical editor to change and add new UI elements to this page so when you open the page dot main dot page you will get a beautiful graphical editor to edit our application page so let me show you we go to the pages so you see the path here my application folder pages folder and main page so let's go to pages folder and we have the main page here <clears throat> and you can see it is loading the editor this will be a graphical editor which will help us to add different controls to our application So now here we can add, uh, you know, some components very easily, the UI elements. So uh, do not compare this directly with SAP UI5 or Fury, which you have might have worked in my previous classes or other trainings. It's a completely different experience with a different set of controls. So now here we can just add any kind of controls, which you can see here. So maybe let me search for a text control just to display some sample text data, kind of a label or something. If I can find static items, maybe I just add a button so I can drag and drop a button now. <clears throat> so you can see when I'm trying to add a button, you can drop a button only on selection button table control. So it is not allowing me. So let me first add a container <clears throat> or maybe I try to add first a container and then I will try to add a button <clears throat> or let's try to add a title so we can't add a title so we cannot randomly add any control of our choice we need to first add some kind of a some kind of a container to add the other controls so you see data bound containers <clears throat> and in this we can add any of these containers So I just add a form control. So form cell selection. And then inside this, I will try to add a button. So we can just try to add a button inside. Yes, you can see. So now I added a button and I can just choose alignment for the button. And I just say button text type is a text, logo. We can provide all the necessary details which we need, including the name of the button. So I just wanted to, you know, just give you a very basic idea of how exactly it looks. So we can provide the style. We can provide the button title. My name is Anubhav. <clears throat> you can see the button name has changed. So just a simple button I've added. So our goal is not, not right now to focus the view design or the screen design at the moment. Our goal is to just uh, understand the basic outline structure of an application. So that is the main page part where we add our user interface elements of course we will be deep diving in everything at later point of time <clears throat> then comes is the next important part if you go back we have got here a initialize offline action which will get triggered on the launch of our application so now we are happy and our basic application very simple hello world kind of application is ready we can just to proceed further and deploy this application to our SAP BTP account. And then we can test our first mobile application in the browser. So let me switch over back, right click on the application.app and click on deploy, MDK deploy. So we click on that and it asks me, where do you want to deploy your application? how you want to deploy your application so we will be choosing here to deploy it to the cloud foundry as a web application to run the web application or if you just want to run in the mobile phone then we can do mobile service 
to run the mobile application. If you want to do both, then choose mobile and cloud. So let me do both so that it will deploy both the web application, which means we can test it in the normal browser. <clears throat> and we also we wanted to do it in the mobile phone, then we uh, we will also do it as a <coughs> mobile service. So that is what system will do. So now you can see the deployment has started. And now you can see it is deploying also to the Cloud Foundry. So when it comes to web application, it will be deployed as a HTML5 application in HTML5 repo repository in Cloud Foundry. And for mobile, it will deploy to the mobile uh, service client. And you can see the deployment has started. And in just few minutes, we will have our application ready to be tested. Thank you.